Paddington 2 is uh, the sequel to the first Paddington movie from 2015. And in this movie, Paddington is once again voiced by uh, Ben Wishaw, who does an excellent job in both movies. Uh, and Paddington is settled in with the Browns, I believe that's the family name, um, after the events of the first Paddington movie. And Paddington wants to buy a birthday present for his Aunt Lucy because she's done so much for him in his life and she basically saved his life. Um, so he wants to kind of thank her by giving her an amazing uh, birthday present, which is this pop-up book he sees. But it's a lot of money, it's very rare, so Hugh Grant's villain character wants it for particular reasons. And while Paddington's uh, getting jobs to kind of raise money, to get this pop-up book, Hugh Grant's villain steals it, frames Paddington, and now Paddington's got to prove his innocence while there's a whole mystery uh, being unwrapped by the Brown family because they're not aware of what's going on. Uh, neither is Paddington, really, uh, because Paddington's a very naive character. But no, that's our plot in a nutshell. Um, Paddington 2 I was actually pretty excited for. I didn't love the first Paddington movie. I haven't seen it since I saw it the first time, so maybe if I rewatched it, it'd be a lot better. Who knows? I had to rewatch it. But, um, no, I was excited for Paddington 2. And it's great. I, I really like Paddington 2. This is a great movie. I almost kind of loved it. I even cried. I cried at the last scene. I don't know why. It's just such a sweet, nice, kind-hearted movie. You don't see this kind of movie uh, much anymore. There's genuine, like, Hugh Grant's villain's very good and he's very menacing. So there is good menace in the movie, but it's also just very sweet, kind-hearted. And it's such, it's so nice to see that uh, these days, where everything's really dark and gritty, not just in real life, but in the movies. There, every, every movie just has to be dark and gritty. But this movie's nice and colorful, the production design is, uh, uh, just freaking, the production design is amazing in this movie. As it was in the first movie, the colors really pop. It has excellent cinematography and just charming characters. Paddington's such a charming character. His naivete can may, might uh, annoy some. It didn't really annoy me necessarily, but he is a very naive character and he does kind of set events into motion because he's so nice and naive and he's not really aware of, of like the bad in people necessarily. Uh, he's He's always looking for the good in people, which is both a flaw and strength of his character. And I really love how this movie played that up. It was very uh, specific on that. Uh, I feel like that's what they were going for because the characters kind of just come out and say that. But on what they did with Paddington in this movie, I really liked. I loved that. I love that character. And he's sweet here. He's just a sweet, lovable bear. And it's he's really great. I love Paddington as a character. Uh, as for the Browns, the Browns are also a lot more fun in this movie than I remember them being in the last one. Sally Hawkins, it's funny seeing her speak after seeing The Shape of Water. It's just funny seeing her speak again. Um, I don't know, just something I kind of observed. Um, but no, uh, they're all great. Uh, Sally Hawkins does get a lot of focus in this movie, and she was really good. Um, but yeah, the whole mystery aspect is fun, even though you know, you know that is Hugh Grant in the movie because it tells you really early on but Hugh Grant is awesome I love Hugh Grant in this as well he's an excellent villain he's cartoonish but not in a way that screams give me my paycheck he actually seems like he's trying he actually seems like he's giving a lot to this character and he's a lot of fun in the movie he's very menacing when he needs to be and I thought he really worked I think he's a better villain than Nicole Kidman was wasn't she the villain in that? I think so, I have to see the first one again. Um, as for problems, there aren't necessarily a bunch of problems, but I'm not going to say it's an amazing movie, but this is a really great uh, kids movie, family movie. Um, as for problems, there aren't really many, there's just some leaps in logic every once in a while uh, that can get on your nerves, and there's like, there's things like, oh, that's kind of implausible because that wouldn't happen in real life kind of things. There's a lot of stuff like that in this movie. Not a lot, but there's definitely stuff like that in this movie. But it kind of plays to the fun, uh, fun, kind-hearted uh, tone of the movie. So it does work, and I can forgive it for that. But that is a problem with the movie, I guess, uh, that I have to address here. But other than that, this is a really great movie. I mean, it's not perfect. It's not like 
going to be in my top 10 best of the year. But I did really like, I think Paddington 2 was a great sequel. It's a great movie, surprisingly. I was really excited for it, but I didn't expect to like it this much. And I'm going to give Paddington 2 a B+. This is just such a fun, nice, just sweet movie. And it's what we need right now, I think. Um, I don't know, it's just... I really liked it. I really dug it. But yeah, so that's my review for Paddington 2. Um, expect reviews for The Commuter soon. I'm probably going to try to see that Wednesday. Cause I got a screening passes for that. Um, but yeah, that's about the only thing I could think of right now. Maybe I might finally see The Post. We'll see. But yeah, so that's my review for Paddington 2. So, peace.